right, I'm going to show you for the winter time four different teas that are easy identifiable, and very nutritious, and medicinal. So let's take a look. Okay, the first one we're going to look at here, Eastern Hemlock. All right, see these needles? If you find younger ones, it's better, but in the winter in emergencies, you can use these. One way to identify it is see them middle ones growing down the middle of the branch. That's one way to identify it. Two, look at the bottom, you'll have two distinct bluish white lines growing up the bottom. Okay, this tea is similar to pine needle tea, it's rich in vitamin C. Um, you can use this inner bark in emergency situations to make a flower. It's not delicious, you add it with other flour. Um, but this is one of your teas in the winter time that will give you some nutrition, some energy, and that is Eastern Hemlock. It is said that if you're pregnant you shouldn't drink this because it could possibly be abortive. So, just to note, just don't drink it if you're pregnant. Alright, for our other winter tea, this is called Winter Green. Okay, it can get a purple tinge to the leaves like that. A lot of the times you'll find green leaves, more like this. A key identifier, you see how it grows in a group of four like that? Okay, and if we look real close, let's see if I can zoom in on it. It might, it might not. I want to show you the little teeth that it gets on it. Let me see here. Okay, now if you look close, there's little teeth and little spines to the left there by my ring. See that little spine? That's part of your identifier. Just kind of small teeth. They're not, they're not too prickly. They're not going to hurt you or anything. They just fall right off. So that's part of the identifying. Oftentimes, you'll have little black dots on the bottom of it. See the red stem? Okay. These leaves are good all year for tea. Young or old. It's better to use the tender. You can use the younger tender ones for, uh, for salads. It gets a red berry that grows underneath it. I tried to find some today. They usually stay on here throughout the winter until the next flowering season. But the berries are good fall, early spring. Alright, I'm going to go over the fourth tea here. This here is partridge berry or squavine. Okay, it's low and creeping to the ground. See that red berry there? Red berry there. Okay, it keeps us berries over winter. All right, it's all over this whole little hill right here. It's very common. Okay, all these teas I've showed you are common. Is this all the winter teas? No, you can use um, brambles like raspberries or blackberries. You just got to prepare them correctly. These are just the easiest ones for you. Easy to identify and easy to find. Okay, now look at that vine. See that? distinct vein running right down the center, kind of yellowish. That's going to help in identification. Okay, the stem's a little hairy, kind of greenish to reddish, more so green. Here's one that's kind of red. Okay, now if you look at this berry, this is going to be your huge distinction for identification. You see them two, two little eyes looking at you? Okay, all the berries have that. They have two little indents. Now you can eat this berry raw. You know, a lot of people put it in salads. Or you can uh, make a tea out of it. It's kind of tasteless. It's got seeds. It's similar to uh, the uh, beauty berry down in Florida. But you can also use the leaf. It's more of a medicinal type use. Um, it's used for kind of like childbirth pain or irregular or painful um, menses and the leaf also can be used like as an astringent for a wash it'll help reduce swelling and that's that's my main medicinal part for it because obviously I'm not gonna have childbirth pains but if I ever have swelling I know I can make an infusion or a tea and use it as a wash to reduce that swelling as you know, out here it's possible for mechanical injury and swelling can make that more difficult to move if you put a brace on or if you bump your head, it, it'll just help reduce that swelling. Okay, so 
I'm gonna grab me some of these berries and I'm gonna go make me a fire and have me some tea. All right, the next one I'm gonna show you, a lot of you already may know, pine needle tea, okay? If you find some white pine, you can, you know, do the same thing you do on the hemlock, cut the cambium layer, flour, chips if you roast them on a flat rock. I've had them, they're not the most delicious things in the world, but it is food if you're hungry. And you can add it with other flour, you bring some cornmeal or something out here, works good. But these needles, you're supposed to have the young ones which grow out of the center of them buds like I showed you in my video in Florida. In the winter time you're not going to have that, but you still can use these, they're just not going to taste as good. But you're still going to get vitamin C, just don't drink a ton of it, because you get a lot of that turpentine in you. But these can be used, any pines, fine, spruce, and as you can see, this and hemlock grow right next to each other. All these teas are going to grow right next to each other, they're easy to find. But this here, vitamin C, if you have a stuffy nose from a campfire smoke or whatever the case may be, this will help clear you up. All right. So pine needles, they're, they're one of my favorite teas. It's easy to find, easy to make, you know, just make sure you steep the needles. Same with hemlock. So. There's another winter tea that's going to give you some vitamins, some nutrients, some minerals, and a boost of energy. Pine needle tea. Alright, I'm going to go over the fourth tea here. This here is partridge berry, or squavine. Okay, it's low and creeping to the ground. See that red berry there? Red berry there. Okay, it keeps its berries over winter. Alright. It's all over this whole little hill right here. It's very common, okay? All these teas I've showed you are common. Is this all the winter teas? No. You can use um, brambles like raspberries or blackberries. You just gotta prepare them correctly. These are just the easiest ones for you. Easy to identify and easy to find, okay? Now look at that vine. See that distinct vein running right down the center, kind of yellowish. That's going to help in identification. Okay, the stem's a little hairy, kind of greenish to reddish, more so green. Here's one that's kind of red. Okay, now if you look at this berry, this is going to be your huge distinction for identification. You see them two, two little eyes looking at you? Okay, all the berries have that. They have two little indents. Now you can eat this berry raw, you know, a lot of people put it in salads, or you can uh, make a tea out of it. It's kind of tasteless, it's got seeds, it's similar to uh, the uh, beauty berry down in Florida. But you can also use the leaf, it's more of a medicinal type use. Um, it's used for kind of like childbirth pain or irregular or painful um, menses and the leaf also can be used like as an astringent for a wash it'll help reduce swelling and that's that's my main medicinal part for it because obviously I'm not gonna have childbirth pains but if I ever have swelling I know I can make an infusion or a tea and use it as a wash to reduce that swelling because you know out here it's possible for mechanical injury and swelling can make that more difficult to move if you put a brace on. Or if you bump your head, it, it'll just help reduce that swelling. Okay, so I'm going to grab me some of these berries and I'm going to go make me a fire and have me some tea. So we can make our tea, we need to find some water. Okay, now this is not Florida. Florida, you got to work for your water. Yeah, you really do. There's water oozing out of the rocks in Tennessee. But we still gotta make it safe. Now, I have drank this water without, without uh, boiling it and I was fine. Do I recommend that to anybody? No, don't ever do it. If you're like me and you like to test those things and test your body and get adapted to certain elements and things, then that's great. But I do not recommend anybody do that. Okay. What you need to do, find yourself a good bottle. Okay. Now I support the Pathfinder School. 
Dave Canterbury has great products. They're bulletproof, they're bomb proof. And I have actually modified this one a little bit to fit my likings. Okay, I've made it, in my opinion, a little better. If you look, Dave will sell you a 32 ounce stainless steel bottle. It's great, it works great. Okay, I've had many fires, clean it up with sand, it can tell it's still shiny. Now, if you notice, I just dropped that and it didn't fall out. Okay, I've got my mouth spreader right here, which you'll find videos Dave doing where he puts that in there to hold over the fire. You can put a stick through this, hang it over the fire while it holds your bottle up, or put nail holes in your Pathfinder cup. Now, if you also notice, I have my Pathfinder ring stove top there on the outside and I have this extra bottle outside of the uh, Pathfinder cup okay so one I've got three cups in one I've got my mouth spreader to hang over the fire so I don't have to rig anything up and then I just simply tied a piece of paracord I did a fisherman's knot with another knot half hitch over top of it and singed it so it is not coming out okay so if I were to dump this I'm not gonna have pieces rolling around everywhere it's not coming out okay it's held in there by my mouse spreader fits in there perfectly around this handle right to my paracord okay it's great I love it so when you're done and you're ready to get your bottles out you just open this up pull it simply out of the paracord grab your bottles and you've got three cups okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Pathfinder cup to scoop water so we don't get whatever parasites could get on the rim of this if we were to scoop it with this and boil it with this and drink it they could still be on the rim okay there's there's a certain way of doing this so if you were in a situation or just camping and you needed water this is gonna be how you're gonna do it okay I'm gonna go make some tea I know I'm gonna be fine but I'm gonna show you the proper way to gather this water Okay, and then I have a cup separate from this cup that I'm going to gather the water with to drink out of. Okay, so one second, let me get this open and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, I have. Okay, I have all three cups here. Got the Pathfinder cup that came with the 32 ounce bottle, and then I have my separate stainless steel cup which I paint with high temp heat paint because it keeps some of the soot off okay that's another trick now this one fits perfectly inside here and then this fits perfectly inside here so I've got a nice stackable unit I've got three cups I can cook with I can make tea with I can boil water with and I can do it safely and it is nothing in my pack this takes up as much room as this wood alone okay it's light these are not thick, but this is, I mean, this stuff is, is bomb proof. Okay, now if anyone's looking for one of these, I found this one at Publix in Florida. I don't know if there's a Publix in your area, but you can find it probably at many grocery stores. Just find one that nests, that uh, this cup can nest in. Now you might not have this, this cup from the Pathfinder School. I like it because it's bomb proof. It's got the metal lid. Okay, so your water's touching metal, not plastic. It's got a good seal. It's 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 a good product. That's why I got it. It's hard to find stuff like that. So now that we got this out, let's go gather some water, eh? Okay, now we're ready to gather our water. I've got that nested up in there so it will not spill. Okay, we got this cup ready to gather our water. Now you always want to grab water with the stream hitting the back of the cup okay you don't want to grab water this way towards the stream the flow because then you're going to end up grabbing whatever it's pushing down in there now obviously this water is beautiful it's clear it's probably healthier for you than the bottled water you drink from the store because that's also called dead water because it has no nutrients in it whatsoever anything by reverse osmosis is not that good for you so what we want to do find a nice little spot where the water's kind of aerated that's not going to kill the impurities it's not going to kill cryptosporidium or jardia or any parasites but it's going to just help 
give us clean water. See where this water's kind of jumping up right there? If I just grab that water right there, just like this, okay? Okay. Now you see, that's beautiful, it's clear. I got like one little floater in there, and that's about it. Okay, so now we're gonna come over here. Now usually you'd be doing this with two hands, but I need to film it too, so just remember that. Now we wanna dump this in so we do not touch that lid, okay? This is key for Florida. If you were to make a well, like a coyote well, and get water, that's key, all right? We're gonna come back here, we're gonna get some more water. See, now all them parasites are actually, if there were parasites in here, they're on the rim of this glass, or on this uh, cup. So let's take this, carefully dump it in there without getting any on the rim of this. Okay, now we've got water. Okay, we just gotta boil that up. We have our other cup over here, ready to, uh, ready to make our tea. We'll have our tea in there. We'll dump this hot water from here onto there. It's just a great little system. It works out great for me. So uh, maybe you wanna think about doing this too. So let's go off, get our fire going, have some tea. Okay, so we're ready to make our tea here. We got our water getting ready to boil over there on the fire. Okay, I grabbed a little bit of everything. A little wintergreen, a touch of hemlock here. Okay, right here. And we got a little bit of pine needles. These are our vitamin C. This is to round out the flavor. And in this really nice jar that I kept just for this, I gathered just enough of uh, partridge berries to give our tea a nice color and a nice little flavor. Now these, compared to beauty berry, you know, they are kind of tasteless, but they definitely, in my opinion, taste better than a beauty berry because beauty berries are literally bland until you make them into a jelly. Okay, that's where their that's where their prime is. But they are food antioxidants. But these here, they're, they're a delicious little nibble on the trail. But this is all I need for my tea. So I just grabbed enough, left the rest for the partridges. But we're going to mix a little bit of everything. We're just going to steep it all. And it should turn out to be a nice tasty little tea. So let's see what we can get out of it. Okay, we got a nice boil going on inside there in our water bottle. So that's ready to be taken off. Yeah, I threw a can of beans on. I love Bush's baked beans. How can you beat that with this view? A can of beans with some wild winter tea. Okay, so we're gonna pull that off. We're gonna put it in our cup that we kept sterile. Okay, with all of our tea added, we're just gonna steep the whole thing. Okay, and I'm gonna eat the berries too. Okay, that's what it looks like. Now, I didn't put too much of anything in there because you don't want too much. It'll just kind of make the flavor too bold. So I just added, you know, about two, I think two or three leaves of wintergreen, a very small pinch with the twig attached on hemlock, and just a few needles of pine. You know, I'm going to have vitamin C in here. I'm going to have other vitamins. I'm going to have antioxidants. I'm going to have energy, a little bit of nutrition, and I'm going to have a little bit of food, okay? There's lots of these berries here, and it's winter time. Okay, so this is what you're looking for in the winter, you know. These little things are going to boost your psychological morale. It's going to boost your um, energy levels. Pine needle tea is known for its energy. It's going to help you with mucus. You know, right now I'm breathing campfire smoke, so it's going to kind of make your nose a little stuffy, and it's winter out. It's kind of chilly. This is good for you, okay? So we're going to steep this and see what it looks like when we're done here. Okay, I sat down and ate my beans and let this steep the whole time. Okay, it's got a s slight color to it, not much. If you infuse those berries, you know, let them sit on there while it's boiling, then it would get a little more color. But I have a feeling it's going to have some flavor to it. So let's give it a try. Tastes a lot, a lot like just pine, pine tea. 
you can kind of taste them berries in there. Um, they're pretty, like I said, they're kind of tasteless though. You, you really get the flavor when you just eat them raw. But uh, not bad. Slight taste of wintergreen. There's your winter tea. Hope you enjoyed it. Alright, so my camera died and I finally found a patch of wintergreen berries. Okay, because they do keep their berry through the winter. And I wanted to show you some. I showed you the plant so you know what the plant looks like. Now, I've got two partridge berries and two wintergreen berries. Okay, now remember, I showed you that the two little indents on this partridge berry, that's your key identifier for the partridge berry. Okay, sometimes it'll protrude like this, or they will be indents like this. Okay, this one's indented. Okay, there's your partridge berry. And they're pretty similar in color. Okay, now, wintergreen. Take a good look at the bottom of it. See how it has that little star shape there? And the stem grows right from the center. There's no indents. It's kind of a pretty round berry. That's one. Here's another one. This one's without the stem. Okay, that's where the stem would be. Here's the bottom. Here's your little star. Okay, that is winter green. Okay, now this, if you want to get the full effect of the winter green, you just pop one of these in your mouth. Okay, that is definitely winter green. That'll freshen your breath up. I mean, if I go and blow in my wife's face right now, she'll tell me, like, your breath smells like you just ate a lifesaver. That's, that's what they taste like, okay? They're edible. You can do what I did with the partridge berry out there and put it in your tea, put it in a salad, okay? Both these berries together are great. They're there for the winter, for food, for tea. But I really wanted to show you the wintergreen berries so I can show you the difference between the two. So, now I did. I'm sorry I didn't get it on video on the plant itself. Uh, maybe I'll get that on there in another video. Alright, thanks for watching.